Hey Fritz here. Today we'll be looking briefly into the origins of the English Premier League, so let's crack on. It is appropriate that the shining beacon of English football sprang from some of the worst moments in the nation's footballing history. The sport throughout the 1970s and 80s was characterized by persistent financial management and a lack of business savvy. Because there was so little live television coverage, clubs had to rely on revenue from matchday activities like ticket sales to stay afloat. Authorities in football feared that if games were televised live, attendance would drop and clubs would lose out on their most important source of income. The leagues also had an abundance of battered, hazardous, and aging stadiums that served as the backdrop for a number of social problems, including rife hooliganism. Hooliganism was closely linked to radical and racist political organizations like the National Front, as the BBC discovered in an episode of Panorama back in 1977. The first line of defense against hooliganism was vigorous policing of football fans. In response to the unrest at Stamford Bridge, Chelsea football club owner Ken Bates requested permission from the local council to erect an electric fence in front of one stand. Unsurprisingly, his application was turned down. The late 1980s were the lowest point in English football's dark ages. In 1985, a fire started during a game between Bradford and Lincoln City. Within four minutes, it had consumed the whole main stand, killing 56 fans and wounding 265 others. The same year, violence at the European Cup final between Liverpool and Juventus led to a portion of the stadium collapsing, killing 39 Juventus supporters and wounding 600 more. This incident furthered English football's reputation for hooliganism. Due to the events at Hazel Stadium, English clubs including Liverpool were barred from participating in European competitions for five years. A crush that developed in the standing-only pens of the Leppings Lane stand during an FA Cup semi-final between Liverpool and Sheffield United in 89, which occurred at Hillsborough Stadium, has resulted in 96 deaths and 766 injuries among Liverpool supporters. Such seismic events compelled the central government to act. In 1990, the Taylor report was released. The FA's blueprint for the future of football described how it encouraged football to move up market as to follow the affluent middle class in his or her pursuits and aspirations and is best known for suggesting the stadiums become all-seaters. It also prohibited alcohol consumption near the playing field. Modernization was viewed as a primary impetus behind the growth of English football and laid the groundwork for the Premier League's upscale international reputation. The deteriorating ties between the Football League and the FA were important factors in the formation of the Premier League breakaway. Political tension grew amongst those who shared the regulatory authority over the game as commercialization increased in the 1980s and 90s. Shirt sponsorship was only allowed starting in the early 80s. David Dine, then deputy chairman of Arsenal, was a fervent supporter of America's glitzy sports business and was dismayed by the English football hierarchy's lack of commercial ingenuity. In 1988, Greg Dyke, the chairman of ITV Sport and the CEO of London Weekend Television, met with Dyne and other officials from Manchester United, Everton, Liverpool, and Tottenham Hotspur to discuss the possibility of selling their rights and launching a breakaway tournament. To avoid a breakaway, the Football League promptly and at a reduced price sold its rights to ITV Sport after learning about the plot. The Football League issued a study titled One Team, One Game, One Voice in response to the risk of falling behind, calling for closer FA collaboration and a comprehensive strategy for the growth of all English football's professional leagues. Another secession proposal from the Football League was made to Graham Kelly of the FA by Dine and Noel White of Liverpool and it was favorably accepted. The FA's blueprint, The Future of Football, in response to the Football League's report, rejected the recommendations and established itself as the supreme governing body of English football. The advantages of a new independent top league, which would drastically reduce the influence of the football league, were also mentioned. A new independent top division would end power struggles in the game, boost the sport's reputation, increase the chances of success for the England team, increase the likelihood of receiving additional government funding, and provide enhanced commercial benefits according to the justifications for the Premier League listed in Blueprint.